Welcome back to Imperfect Parenting, our new name mm-hmm. for our podcast that used to be called Coffee, Kids, and Crazy. I'm Seth. I'm Brittany. And we also have... And I'm Ben. Ben. I'm back. I'm Stan. Ben is staying. I'm here it's now true. because Brittany wrote a book and I just want to talk about it as much as possible. <laughs> mm-hmm. And you're in it a lot. I'm, I'm, I'm probably the uh, star figure after her. You are. Yes. All the things Could that have done Ben helped me you. learn. That's right. Yeah. So... But like always, this is our beginning of the month podcast. We have Seth with us, which is yep. always fun. And because of that, we do our memes. We have our memes. We save our memes just for you. We have a couple good ones for this episode that I like so much. Today, we're going to be talking about boundaries. That I need to give that much context yes. for this. So this meme, if you're just listening, it is a child. It looks like a Starbucks bathroom mm-hmm. An old Starbucks. Technically, bathroom. it looks like a gas Early station 2000s. bathroom. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was thinking. And uh, the kid is standing there with the door handle already pulled down, and it says, "When you've got two seconds to wipe before everyone in Starbucks sees you with your pants down." And the I'm kid's about got to a open the door. Smile He's got a smile face. like, "I'm about to open this." Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. Which reason why we want good boundaries is because the next meme that we have, which is, I never watched this movie, but I think it's the Dark Knight mm-hmm. Batman movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Joker. That's the Heath Joker. Ledger he's the Joker. He's, he's, it's Joker's face, and he's very intensely got his hands up and very irritated looking. And it says, You start setting boundaries, and everyone loses their minds. Yep. And that's, I think, what starts to happen. Which Very is fitting. Why? They, they think you're a joker. <laughs> that or. <laughs> that was clever. Yeah, I know. You're right like back that? together. They think you're a joker. I think it's more why often parents uh, stop setting boundaries. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's because everyone loses their mind. Yeah. This wasn't the agreement we made up. Well, they only lose their minds if you haven't been setting boundaries. Yes. Yeah. And typically, when you begin to set boundaries, you may not do it super well. And so. They're not used to it. You're not used to it. They lose their minds. But if you have really young kids, it's good to do this now, practice now, set boundaries as young as possible so that people are used to it in your family. Mm -hmm. And no one loses their minds. (laughs) And then part of the losing the mind is you set a boundary, they lose their mind. You're like, okay, let's not do this. I don't want to do this. We'll try again next year. Yeah. Yeah. So with that, we're going to poke the bear that's what's mm-hmm. about to happen. Hear my heart, okay? Hear my heart. When we say this, yeah, we're we're just picking a very hot topic right now. Mm-hmm. Very hot topic. Nobody get triggered. Yeah. Okay. Turn your, <laughs> unload your gun. So when we push the trigger, you don't shoot at us. Yes. So we're gonna talk about gentle parenting. Mm-hmm. Now everything that I've read or I've seen or the heart behind it, the goal. I actually really like it. Me too. I I think these great connection is the focus, uh, bringing empathy, understanding, healthy emotional awareness. A lot of it's very similar Mm -hmm. stuff. You say, we say. Yep, it's very similar. A lot of it is. It's very popular right now. Mm -hmm. Um, The emotional intelligence, I think, is is just really popular right now with um, the next wave of parents coming up. Yep. Which technically, Ben and I are in the millennial age bracket. I don't know if you I'm are. I'm not. You're not. I'm a little older than you're you just we'll, we'll leave it there. But yeah. you're, you're wise. But the millennial generation... <laughs> <laughs> He's pointing to his great has, ways. Mm-hmm. They've jumped all over this. At, uh, I think a big part of it is because of their upbringing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That control, um, you know, get over it, uh, having low emotional intelligence, you know, from their upbringing, their parents. So because of all that, gentle parenting sounds amazing. Now we also have TikTok and Instagram and all these quick ways of getting these tools. Yeah. But what I have encountered personally, so this is my personal experience, love the concepts of gentle parenting. Don't have anything wrong with that. Yeah. What I'm seeing happen, though, is a lot of gentle parenting connection, focus, let me know your emotional needs, and no boundaries. Mm-hmm. That's what I keep running into, which is the only which reason would, why I picked this topic because it's yeah. popular. And which what I'm probably saying. the way we would say that is a poor execution of a great idea. Yes. Of a great parenting strategy, horrible execution, removing all boundaries. 
and or, then or pushing boundaries so far back that no one's enjoying your child, mm -hmm. but you think that everyone is. Which which really can happen with any tool, right? Yeah. I mean, I I love to work with tools, mm -hmm. build build things. I've used tools wrong many times. <laughs> yeah. Until one day I go, oh my gosh. That's how you use this tool. Yeah. That's how you build a table with that tool. I've where I've heard you go, oh. <laughs> I get it now. I took the time to understand and use it correctly, and it's a whole different outcome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think, I think even, even tools we talk about all the time that your dad's written about for years yep. and, and let us all in, yep. the same tools that he's given away can, can be used poorly. Yeah. So like, okay, gentle parenting, people take that and execute it that way move the boundaries so far away like mm -hmm. some of the things i've seen with loving on purpose mm -hmm. um anything that we've talked about in the past is like oh a parent who wants to control their kids wants obedience instantaneous mm -hmm. obedience joyful obedience and Im joyful immediate obedience from kids will take the tools that we provide yep. and use them just to control their kids Absolutely. better like well that's not a boundary that's control yep. whereas this is like oh i want the emotional intelligence i want to bring in some of that and like oh You've gone so far the other way that you're yeah. you, you're just using it in it, a way it wasn't intended, right? And I don't. It's kind of the the opposite where we probably grew up with that control, that want the desire for punishment. Um, spanking was overutilized, to, you know, fear to get a response. Where now we want you to have the space to feel your feelings, feel your big emotions. I'm here for you. So instead of fear driven, we become friend driven. I yeah, want to be your exactly. friend rather than um, be the person leading you. Yeah. Um, again, this is I'm generalizing the experiences that I've had because um, of something that's really popular. Again, I, I think the hard part is uh, when you re remove connection, you increase fear and punishment. When you remove boundaries, you just produce um, a buddy as a parent instead yeah. of a yeah. parent that's leading. Another way we'd say that is boundaries – Without freedom is control, mm -hmm. but freedom without boundaries is chaos. Yeah, and that's, and I would say freedom and boundaries together is peace. So, like, you know, a lot of times, if you take away the boundaries, you're just allowing chaos to rule in your home, and that's where people don't like your kids anymore. Mm -hmm. Or, or you, I, th I think some parents, they're honest. I don't know that they really like their kids mm -hmm. so much because there's just this swirl happening um, of emotions. I'm trying to yeah. do the right thing and I'm trying to listen to you and I don't like you anymore. <laughs> I wish I could just spank you. I, I, I was thinking about the just the awareness that's clicked up and the swing we're talking about with paying attention to your child's emotional state and where they're at. It's, it's not a bad thing. Yeah, I think lots of our parents in previous generations have missed it. And, and almost ignored it because they didn't know how. It wasn't taught to them. Right. Um, but I, one of the things I see and have even felt as a parent is I don't want to be the target of that negative emotion. And so how do I avoid being the target mm -hmm. of this negative emotion you're expressing? What does that mean about me? It starts changing my identity or, or it, it attacks what I believe about myself as, a, as an adult, as a person, as a whatever. So... I think that thing has to be settled too to, to clearly set firm, healthy, helpful boundaries is I can handle your negative emotion even if it's directed at me. Mm -hmm. And I have a healthy boundary for you can have this negative emotion and I'll be here when you want to talk, but it doesn't mean I have to be violated yes. yeah. by your negative emotion. Well, that's, that's great. So take a fast rabbit trail, like the tool, let's talk when your voice sounds like mine. Mm -hmm. To me... Like I, I play around with that a lot. Like if my kids aren't doing well, I'll go, hey, I know this is really hard. Mm -hmm. I know this is not fun. I know that was scary. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll lead with I'm meeting you where you're at. I'm acknowledging your emotion. I can see it. And I'm giving you a little bit of time to sort of think, come back, um, whatever. And then, and then I know this is really hard. Hey, let's talk when your voice sounds like me, mm -hmm. like this. Like like mine, and so I'm I'm acknowledging where they're at and setting a boundary and requiring them to come down and then talk to me like this. Mm -hmm. And that's way you get way more accomplished than if you just engage when the emotion is all intense. Yeah, there's a lot of um, talk around kids don't know how to self regulate, mm -hmm. and I you're right they don't, which is why we have to help teach them. Mm -hmm. So we have to create really safe environments 
with very self-aware parents that have a goal of leading well to create opportunities for you to learn how to do that. Because if yeah. they go to the pr- playground and are, are crazy, emotional, disrespectful little people, they're not going to be received well because nobody wants to be around that. Yeah. So this is where we have to create space for that to be able to practice in a really safe space. Yeah. So Here's some two, li- two lines <laughs> that I've been thinking about a lot lately. Like a lot of kids, we want our kids to live in between the lines of respect and fear, where they're not over here afraid of us, Mm -hmm. but they're not over there disrespecting us. They're in between here. And it's like a lot of times like, man, I don't want my kids to be afraid. So we allow them to go into disrespect and like... It narrows and narrows and narrows. Yeah. And so it's like, oh, boundaries keep you respectful Mm -hmm. and healthy boundaries keep you from being afraid of me. You're not afraid, but you're not disrespectful either. Mm -hmm. You're safe. It's a powerful thing. The idea of creating self-aware, respectful kids, you know, your analogy earlier of um, I understand you're frustrated. I understand this is hard. The beauty of our differences is, you know, just the other day we had a daughter that didn't do her schoolwork on time and the quarter was ending and she's normally very responsible with managing herself, but I don't know what was going on, but I don't know, it was Christmas break, coming off of that, the retreat, all the fun things. She just didn't feel like doing it. Well, all of a sudden her problem, she's trying to make our problem. Mm -hmm. You know, she's in middle school and her desire and need for help is is significant. She does need help and I want to help her, but the disrespect or the attitude in asking for help, I can acknowledge that she's frustrated, but I still can require that I'm treated differently Mm -hmm. because I don't, just think about anyone that works in customer service. When you (laughs) have to, like this is your paid position to meet with somebody that is a not nice person. All you can think about is getting off the phone and away from this person because yeah. you do not want to help them. And well, this is, I, the beauty of this is like, I don't have to help you with your problem. This is not my paid responsibility to do your social studies assignment. Thank Last you, minute. Jesus. I already <laughs> have done this. But that, hey, I know, I know you're frustrated and I want to help you, but I, I, I want to help somebody that's going to be kind. Yeah. Um, so take a moment. Let me know when you're ready. Yeah. And, and it, sometimes she doesn't get there quite to the standard that I need to be able to actually engage. But Ben has a different standard than I do. And it's not that he, you know, he just has more grace. That's the truth of it. Ben has more grace than I do. So he's able to go in because he's got a little bit more capacity mm-hmm. than I do. And, I say it. and so that's the, the, the beauty of when you are working as a team is I get to send Ben in like, okay, Tag. she's having a hard time coming down. And this is, you have more grace here than I do, so can you help us? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's what I, I love. love that. And we get to do that. We had a situation as well around the same time you're describing, um, but it was with Lincoln where we've had a, uh, it was a sighting of a certain animal. Oh, yes. We had a mountain lion. Mountain lion. I was going to say bobcat. That was no, wrong. No, a mountain, mountain lion. Come out. You know, that's around the, the house. To the farm. Well, somewhere in the neighborhood. Yes. Probably close close to the farm. It's actually fairly close to our house. Yeah. You know, so we're we're, we're just kind of, just giving some helpful hints to the kids and tools and just be aware when you go to the farm and stay together, whatever. We have a little puppy too. And this little puppy loves to be outside and then inside and outside and inside. kind of clueless yeah. Yeah. to things. And yeah. so Lincoln heard about this mountain lion. He's like, do not let the puppy outside after dark because something bad's going to happen. So he's been managing that. And well, I was, I was in the backyard and it was dark. It was dark. It yeah. was dark. So the girls let the dog out. Now, Lincoln, now my son doesn't do this. Mm-mm. I heard him from a, a ways away wailing in, in like agony. I wailing. was in bed and I thought they were fighting yeah. downstairs. Like, I'm like, what is going no! on? No, no. He's just super Because he's like, the dog's gone. Yeah. That's it. She's been eaten by a mountain lion. He's, he's already there. Yeah. And he's just at the top of his game in the worst way. And, uh, so the girls are out there. The girls start giggling because they're just not sure what to do with what's happening. So I kind of make it down there and, okay, girls, stop laughing for a second. I help them understand what's happening and calm them down. And 
I was I was helping them gain some empathy because part of the story that listeners might be missing is we had a dog pass away yeah. about six months ago. Right. So Lincoln's just got this. He's 10 years old. Tender, he's still too. processing. Yeah. It's a really hard thing to process for a 10-year-old. So he's really scared. But I, I think the piece that was just listening to your fear and respect thing is I told Lincoln, buddy, I, I need you to figure out what you're going to do with your fear. Mm-hmm. Girls, I need you to figure out how to find empathy and help your brother. Because mm-hmm. I think even the, the regulation thing in siblings is important. Yeah. That we learn to help each other. Mm-hmm. It's not just mom and dad's job. As we get some tools, we, we get to give them away and keep each other accountable. Mm-hmm. That you don't get to treat me like that. Mm-hmm. You don't get to just go off because you felt like it. That the respect actually happens in a sibling relationship too. So yeah. it's kind of a dramatic story. Um, the, the puppy's fine. Lincoln's fine. Yeah, the girls I are fine. The puppy. Uh, and you know, the reality is that you know <laughs> there could be three mountain lions in a yeah. ten mile radius and whatever. I think typically a mountain lion has a over a hundred mile radius uh, well, just le- to themselves. So. I learned this, and then the guy, that, the trapper that called me, he said Lincoln did some. Uh, Lincoln, Brittany did some uh, pretty serious I didn't, research. They called yeah. me because I was reporting it. So I learned that they could be a lot <laughs> closer, m- more. Okay, okay. Because Good the, to know. Oh, at least in our area because they're fighting for space. Unrelated to parenting, but there's random yeah, we, information about mountain lions for you. <laughs> did you didn't know you are going to be on a National Geographic show. Hey, Brittany here. Yes, you normally hear me on The Kylo Show, but I am interrupting to tell you about my book, Imperfect Parenting Connection Over Perfection, is coming out Mother's Day. So check that out. Before that, I've got a conference happening. I know, at the beginning of May. May's gonna be great. So if you wanna come to the conference with all of my friends, Seth Dahl, our Lauren and Jason Valatin, Danny Silk, all these wonderful people are coming, make sure you go to imperfectparenting.co to find out the details, and hopefully I see you there. But to come back, so Mm -hmm. Ben goes down, mountain lion, freaking out, Lincoln, you're helping with all of that, and we were talking about gentle parenting originally. What do you call the type of parenting that we are talking about with boundaries, with freedom, with empathy, respect, setting those about hey girls i need you to help him here's what's going on what do you call that it's not gentle parenting what are you calling it i'm calling it engaged parenting uh, in my my book i i kind of reference all the different styles and we've talked about that before um and i and i do give some examples of my personal experience with gentle parenting and and what i see is missing and and what i'm hoping parents change I love the pursuit of connection. I love the pursuit of self awareness and it's and the even foundation of it all. Yeah, and 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 bringing awareness to the child, making a space for their emotions. I can handle those big feelings that you've got. I'm not afraid of them, but I'm not going to let them control our house. So, being an engaged parent is really that I know and I'm secure in what I'm supposed to be leading in. Yeah, and I'm going to choose to engage and do that well. Yeah. So I I, I think if we were to um, how do you gauge if you're practicing boundaries well or not practicing boundaries well? Like, what's a good takeaway? I think one thing is what's happening inside of me. Mm-hmm. If I feel anger or slight rage going mm-hmm. on inside and I can sense it in my tone of voice, like, this is not a good boundary. Yeah, I'm controlling. Mm-hmm. I'm, whoa, I need to back up. I mean, my daughter... Like the good thing about setting boundaries is then your kids will do it too. Like yeah. I, not that long ago, I was like to my kids, I was like, guys, we're going to talk when your voice, when everyone's voices sounds like this. And Brooklyn's like, <laughs> but dad, your voice sounds angry. She's done this to me before. Like, <laughs> it's happened twice in our lives. Once she was young and That's once awesome. like not that long ago. Mm-hmm. And she's like, but dad, your voice sounds angry. I'm like, well, thank you. <laughs> it is angry. Thank you. I'm mad. <laughs> That yeah. you did that, but I'm also really glad. And I'm like, hey, thank you. That's the culture. And it helped me calm down because mm-hmm. she called me on it. I'm like, wow, thanks, my girl. Guys, I don't want to speak to you this way, and that's I don't want you speaking that way. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to adjust, and then we can all talk like like this. And then then we worked it out. But I think I wasn't even aware that I wasn't aware what was going on in here that I actually felt angry, and it was coming out of my. In your my tone, voice yeah. and my tone and she picked it up but I think for me I know I can tell one of the ways I can tell I'm setting a healthy boundary is I'm not just I'm not super frustrated mm-hmm. I'm like oh I'm going to set a boundary we're going to work through this but I'm not pushing that out of me 
I, I think a different way to say what I think I just heard you say <laughs> is that you start feeling out of control yourself. Mm-hmm. Like I'm no longer in control of myself. And right. that's, that's actually part of what a boundary does. Yeah. Is it protects the thing that's important to me, mm-hmm. which in this case is peace and respect mm-hmm. and joy. Connection. Which Connection. I, I think that's beautiful when the context of gentle parenting, like if you never set boundaries, eventually you're the one that's super angry and super frustrated or super shut down because you haven't, you're not setting boundaries for you mm-hmm. either. By not setting boundaries for them, we're not setting boundaries for us. Mm-hmm. Yep. And now we're losing what we wanted to keep. Yeah. yeah. Boundaries definitely are the, um, they're necessities for parenting well. Mm-hmm. I, I think the world is full of boundaries and if we create a world where boundaries don't exist for our kids or if we create a world where there's only boundaries, you know, rules without relationship equals rebellion. Bill Johnson said that. Mm-hmm. And that's what it just it feels like you're messing with this. Is you're you're looking for rebellion to start happening if you're only leading with boundaries um, and you're not being aware of what your kids might need. And if I'm removing those, then I've just got chaos. There's no, there, I'm I've no longer, I'm not setting the course for this family. And and I I, I think the bringing it into the culture, one like Brooklyn feels safe enough to give you feedback. Yeah. Because she knows that you can handle it, yeah. Because you've demonstrated it to her. Adjusted a few mm-hmm. times, yeah. With our kids, they know that they can handle it with each other because mm-hmm. it's something we have high value for and we encourage. And so this dynamic of we're, we're all protecting connection and we're all respecting each other's boundaries. I don't know how many times I say, Lincoln, how do you think your sister feels when you do this? Mm-hmm. You are choosing to violate her boundary when she's close her door told you not to go in there and you go in there yeah. you know what is the experience son what do you want her to feel i mean it just becomes this really great space yeah. for you know we all have needs and we all want to protect each other yeah i just just to answer the first question real quick uh you're you're talking about in, engaged parenting and boundaries and i think w- when i hear that my first thought is disengaged mm-hmm. which is one of my my go-to's uh, on a bad day, if I'm not careful, I'm not paying good attention to my boundaries, what I'm protecting, I'm gonna disengage and the reason is to protect myself. So that's one of the pieces that I've noticed is it's actually a self-protection thing that I'm doing. It's really hard to set boundaries out there when I'm working really hard to protect myself. Yeah. So, and that's, th- there's different styles, different parenting styles and personalities. So like but. my frustration that comes out of my tone is more like I'm moving into fight mode. You're moving more into flight mode right. going, I'm, I got to disengage here because yeah. I'm in over my head and I'm going, I got to extra engage here because I'm in mm-hmm. over my head. And yeah. Great. And the, the unengaged parent, um, that's just hopeful that it will figure itself out. <laughs> <laughs> it never works. It's a deer in the headlights. Yeah, that's never the, gonna work. That's the freeze. It's it worse. Uh, it itself out. I, you know what? You guys just work it out. I'm I left kidding. you in the room with a, mar- a, a marker and came back, and it was just the same as I left you. <laughs> yeah, never. Yeah, right. It's all over the walls. I have a good story about boundaries and rooms. My daughter, so she has two brothers. She's older than both of them, and she does not want them in her room unless she gives them permission, mm-hmm. and she gives them no permission unless they ask. And so when she was younger, she was really struggling with this, like, get out of my, you know, she's mad. And I said, hey, here's what I want you to do. I told the boys, I said, boys, you need to approach her room and and knock and ask, hey, can I come in? And if she says no, you need to honor her no, respect her no, and back off, just like you would want her to respect your no. And then I told her, I said, listen, I just want you to say no. Like, no, you can't come in. And if they push and come in, I want you to come get me. Mm. I will cover you. And she's like, well, what's that? I said, well, I'll, I'll, I'll come in, and if they push your boundary, now they have to deal with mine. Not in a mean way, right. but like now, they, now I'm going to go, hey, boys, you, she said no, and you still came in. Well, it was really cool because after a while of this where she knew, it was like she came under authority, and she felt like if I say no and they don't respect me, I can just call dad and I don't have to get super angry and freak out. Mm-hmm. I can just call dad and he'll come and myself. back me up. And the boys were like, if we dis- <laughs> if we violate her boundary, dad's going to come in and mm-hmm. then we're going to have to go sit in the no fun chair. Deal go, with that. Yeah, now we got but not yeah, again, not like there's, here there's I come, no, here comes yeah, wait yeah. till your dad gets home, wait <laughs> no, till I tell your that. dad. Not that. 
But it was really cool because later I just noticed it one day. I'm like, oh, she feels so confident. They'll knock. I'm like, hey, can we come in? She's like, no. And they're like, all right. And they walked off. I'm like, whoa, she knows her boundaries have backup. There's mm. backup to her boundaries. I'm yeah. going to help her. I'm going to cover her. And they know they need to respect her boundaries or there's backup for that too. I don't know. It was really cool for me to notice it and go, oh, we've worked on this a while. And now she is confident in her boundary setting in her room. And they, they're back and off her. They're respecting her boundaries and not crossing them as much. Which probably creates a much more peaceful home with totally. siblings. Yeah, because she's not screaming. They're mm -hmm. not pushing. Not to say it never happens, sure. but I saw it and I was like, wow, that was, that's months and months and years and years of working on this. Practice. Practice. Yeah. Showing Culture up. creating. That's Engage it. the whole time. Mm -hmm. That's okay. it. Engage parenting. Engage parenting. Mm -hmm. We are going to do a question though. Can I read it to you too? Sure. How about that? I've been sitting here looking at this thinking, this is good timing because it's about a room. <laughs> it's about oh, a room. Oh, it is. Um, yeah. <laughs> so real quick, they did say they wanted to reach out and tell you, first of all, they loved your dad's book, Brittany. So mm -hmm. you should tell him, unless he's listening. Um, also, this podcast and the podcast you've the dad, this person's feeling really helped. So we love hearing that stuff. Uh, the the thing, the question they're really asking here is: she has a daughter who's twelve years old. When is she too old to stop the fun room? And what happens if they refuse to go in their room? Fun room is when kids are being wild. Yeah. Hey, do you want to be fun? Right now, you're no fun to be with. Do you want to be fun, or do you want to head to your room? It's setting boundary. a boundary with, <laughs> I require you to engage in this way. Mm -hmm. yeah. If you're not going to take some time in your room when you're ready to engage like this, come on out. Yeah. yeah. When are so they too old for is, that? Is she too old? The second question, the second part of the question really is about her nine-year-old boy, which he's refusing to go, to go to his room when she sets that boundary. So it's kind of a two-part question. She double-dipped on that one. Too old? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Clever. <laughs> and then um, mm, what to do when, when they, they kind of dig their heels and say, I'm not going yeah. over there. It's a great question for this. Mm -hmm. These uh, people are losing their minds when they get a boundary. Mm -hmm. They think you're a joker. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. No, keep Back up. to the meme. Back to the meme. Uh, I first think about, you know, I s kind of stopped using fun or room and I moved into more hassle time. Yeah. I think that was when my kid was um, prob well, they were probably like six, five, somewhere in there. It was less and less yeah. fun, fun or room. room. It still happened, but it, um, I mean, I did tell Adeline, you wanted to be fun or go somewhere else. It wasn't her room, but it was, you're no fun to be around. So I don't, I'm fine with you having this emotion, but I don't want you to be near me. Expressing it that way. Yeah, that, I, you got to go somewhere else. And, and if you choose not to, I'll be taking my ears somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Right. But if you're used to fun or room, and typically in that toddler says, you know, frame of mind and you're picking them up if they don't choose to go to their room you want to walk do you want me to carry you there's lots of choices right that we give in all this um i think they should probably move on to hassle time mm -hmm. um and you just learned it's not the hassle hassle timer even though that's, hassle what, you, timer. that's what you call it which is great you still keep it that, that's a product you should create hassle timer uh, I yeah know. and hassle time is just really the exchange of time so um I think what might be happening with the 12 year old and even the nine year old is you're starting to engage in a power struggle, yeah. which is um, you're no fun to be around and you refuse to go to your room. And so now we're arguing over this. And, and the, now it's really no fun. And now it's probably just intensifying, intensifying. Instead of disengaging from the power struggle, like that's step number one, I think, for parents is to learn to unplug the button and just not engage with the power struggle, use the other tools that we have. Um, to set yourself up for success to not take the bait. Yeah, That's what I'm always saying. It's like, don't take the bait of the power struggle. So like the kid, hey, fun or room? Nine-year-old's not being fun, fun or room? And you're like, no, I'm not going. How would you do the hassle timer there? I say, oh, you're not going to go. I, I'd love for you to go somewhere else because you're no fun to be around. So yeah. whether it's your room or outside, I don't care. I'm just Well, I'm, I'm not going. I'm staying okay. right here and I'm going to cling around you and push your buttons even more <laughs> and I am here's yeah, small bait. now what, here's small bait. Yeah. yeah and I would say hey no problem don't worry about it I'm gonna start house time and I go about doing whatever I was doing unless they're physically being aggressive and I need help yeah. um, and I have to 
leave, they're probably just going to walk around and mope, pout, complain, whine, and your job is to manage yourself. Mm -hmm. Um, And keep track of the time. And keep track of the time. So let's say that carries on for 30 minutes before he decides he's bored of it and goes somewhere else. Um, I save that hassle time until there's a really great opportunity. Me too. At this age, you can save it because they understand Mm -hmm. They can differentiate. They can have some space between what I did and my consequence for it. So, you know, if it's four days later, five days later, that's you save it for when it's now a hassle for them. Yeah. Well, now it's no fun for Mm -hmm. them because they they owe time that they took because of their disrespect. Yeah. And so that for us, that looks like, you know, I'd love to take you to the birthday party Mm -hmm. as soon as your hassle time's done. My son, two weeks ago had 14 minutes of hassle time, and we went to um, go-kart, mini golf, batting cages, rock climbing oh, wall, video games, roller coaster. We were at this awesome, awesome place. And I said, buddy, you got 14 minutes of hassle time. He says, I know. I said, come here and grab a seat. Let's sit here for 14 minutes. I'm here with you. We're going to hang out. So he's sitting here with the parents talking. All the kids are climbing the walls and doing it. He's like, like, this is so great. You are, this is such a You're hassle for you. so yeah. much. And when I say I'm starting to feel hassled, it ha- carries weight, which is I don't, I don't want to take your time. By my disrespect, I'd mm-hmm. rather manage myself because I'm not asking the impossible. We're not, you know. I need you to solve the world hunger problems. <laughs> yeah. You have 14 minutes. Yeah. yeah. It's literally a request for you to be respectful. Yeah. And, it, and it really comes with the heart of, I actually want to help you learn to manage yourself mm-hmm. in, in many ways. And right now it's starting with, you're not doing a good job managing yourself. Here's some practice. Yeah. Here's an opportunity. Yeah. And, and understanding the impact you're having on people around you. It's yeah. such, a, such an important tool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Super good. I love that Ben and I get some follow-up time to kind of dive deeper into some of these things yeah. so we can help. But um, always love having you on the Yeah, podcast. always love You're being the best. here. Yes. See you next month. Yeah, on Imperfect Parenting. Mm-hmm.